Next we have Joey Laos who earned her undergraduate degree from the University of Georgia and her master's degree from the Nova S Southeastern University in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. She previously worked at the Evelyn Trammell Voice and Swallowing Center and she currently works here at UCSF within the Department of Otolaryngology where she participates in a highly specialized neurolaryngology clinic at the Voice and Swallowing Center. She specializes in the evaluation and treatment of swallowing disorders, utilizing advanced instrumentation for diagnostic and treatment for those with neurologically based communication and swallowing difficulties. Hello, everyone. Excuse me for speaking very quickly. I'm trying to fit in too many slides that I made in 10 minutes. <laughs> um, so as Christine was saying, I'm going to talk to you today about evaluation and management of swallowing disorders and those with PSP and uh, CBD. Swallowing is a very complex physiological process involving both voluntary and reflexive motor activity, reflexive that you can't control, voluntary that you can control, and also um, sensory integration. It requires the coordination, activation, and inhibition of more than 25 pairs of muscles within our mouth, throat, and uh, the esophagus. Dysphagia is a term that refers to difficulty swallowing. It's an estimated 10 million individuals in the U.S are evaluated each year for dysphagia, no matter the diagnoses. <coughs> Speech and swallowing disturbances occur in both PSP and CBD. Uh, average onset of dysarthria, which is a term for speech impairment, after PSP diagnosis is made, is uh, documented to be roughly around 24 months and 42 months later uh, for CBD. Dysphagia is strongly correlated with, dis with dysarthria. Dysphagia quickly follows dysarthria. Uh, within the PSP um, population, it's typically within six months or six months to a year, uh, and then later in, in folks with CBD. Worsening speech and voice coincides uh, typically with worsening swallow. So what are some of the causes of dysphagia that may lead to aspiration in these populations? Aspiration meaning going down the wrong pipe which can lead to a pneumonia. Weak and uncoordinated tongue, uh, absent or reduced movement of the, the palate, uh, delayed timing of the swallowing reflex, reduced frequency in swallows in general swallowing the saliva, and cognitive impairments such as uh, impaired attention, impulsivity, um, and uh, some reduced insight to difficulties. Uh, Dr. Litvig, uh, Litvin and colleagues found that the most frequent swallowing complaints included coughing or choking, excessive saliva, difficulty swallowing, and food falling from the mouth. Insight of impairment level may not be accurate to the patient or caregiver, but research has, has shown that PSP patients are highly aware of dysphagia despite cognition. More understanding of the disease course allows for best management um, for patients and better caregiver guidance. Aspiration pneumonia caused by dysphagia where food, liquid, or saliva enters the lungs is one of the leading causes of mortality and complications in both populations. Early evaluation and management of swallowing is therefore best practice. Early involvement with a speech language pathologist um, in addition to a neurolaryngologist allows for multidisciplinary assessment of speech, voice, and swallowing function with interval monitoring as the disease changes or progresses. Management throughout the stages as to maintain a safe swallow is obviously very important as well. Um, there's two types of instrumental evaluations um, that we utilize uh, to evaluate swallowing. One involves a little flexible tube that's passed through the nose into the throat that has a camera and a light at the end um, and we give someone different foods and liquids and watch them swallow. And another way is a modified barium swallow and it's done in x-ray where someone <coughs> swallows liquids and solids coated with barium and, th and we evaluate the stages of someone swallowing from their mouth down to the stomach. Based on these findings, we decide under what conditions 
the swallow is safe or safest and most efficient. This is the most critical goal of swallowing intervention. What to expect from swallowing therapy? Again, ways to maintain safest swallow to reduce aspiration pneumonia risk uh, and ways to increase the efficiency, efficiency of oral intake for weight maintenance and hydration. So some ways we might help you do that is suggest strategies, um, positional changes like telling someone to sit, make sure you're sitting up straight or putting the chin in a downward position that helps close off the airway to reduce the risk of aspiration. Um, we might suggest helpful equipment. There are special straws or cups um, that may help only uh, let so much out at one time. So if someone is impulsive and tends to guzzle, um, it can help uh, reduce that amount, the, the inability to, to guzzle. Um, and a nosy cup helps kind of keep that chin down. Uh, supervision is especially important for those that do have some problems with cognition, um, that impulsivity to, to eat too quickly um, or to overstuff the mouth before um, someone is swallowed. Um, and this is really essential as uh, the disease changes. One-on-one um, -on -one environments might be best to, to reduce distractions. Um, putting small amounts on a plate uh, in, rather than one big plate of food and cutting things into small pieces can also help with that impulsive impulsivity of eating too much too quickly and encouraging a slower pace, um, putting the cup down or cutlery down in between bites and sips. We may suggest modifying textures such as thickening liquids to, flow, to slow the flow. Um, thin liquids can be really difficult to manage because they spill so quickly and they can go down the wrong pipe um, then more easily. So we might suggest a thickener to slow that down or, or other thickening agents, um, or avoiding mixed consistencies that have a solid and a liquid together, as chewing can also be laborious um, or effortful. Uh, so as you're working on chewing, the liquid can slip down the wrong pipe. Um, softer, more cohesive solids that stick together can be easier. Um, sometimes crushing pills or taking them with applesauce is another trick. We know that oral care is very important in reducing the risk of aspiration pneumonia. So we will often uh, suggest to brush your teeth before and after meals. So if you do aspirate, there's less bacteria in the mouth that is carried along with the food or liquid into the lung, um, which has shown to, uh, to be less risk of colonization and turning into pneumonia in the lung. And then we might suggest dietetic support through a nutritionist. Um, or high calorie supplements. Um, considerations for a feeding tube are sometimes made. Um, you know, that those cases can be if someone's aspirating, having things go down the wrong pipe of all textures, um, despite our attempts to uh, modifications um, and treatment. If there's great weight loss or meals are just no longer enjoyable, they're very lengthy and laborious. Those conversations uh, should be had, uh, should be made early with your whole team and what you, know, you would like to do, what's the best decision for you. Um, understand your options and, and make uh, that known. In summary, the following are some signs of dysphagia uh, and aspiration that you should be aware of and warrant evaluation and management. Coughing, frequent throat clearing, wet voice, a gurgly sounding voice, increased meal times, um, difficulty chewing or food falling out of the mouth or just remaining in the mouth, overstuffing the mouth, um, eating too quickly, um, excessive drooling, and weight loss. In terms of rehabilitation, um, there's a whole lot more need of, of research in this area. Um, just a quick touch on that area. Um, one program uh, that's spoken of is the Lee Silverman Voice Therapy. Think loud, speak loud. Um, that can help with um, not only keeping the, the voice loud enough, but to also slow the pace and bring some clarity to speech. Um, there's limited research to support it, but there, there was a study to show that there was some also positive effect on swallowing with that program. Um, there's also research to support 
um, uh, intense, high intense rehab uh, rehabilitation. Um, there was a study uh, where folks were enrolled in an uh, inpatient intensive program where they received physical therapy, occupational therapy, and speech therapy three hours a day, five to seven days a week. Um, and they found uh, good uh, clinical significant improvements in, in functional outcomes in 74% of their patients. Thank you for your time and consideration.